and then I'm going to put a thin wash of orange. Hi everyone, I'm Mike, this is the Sunday Art Show and this week I'm going to take you through a real-time demo of how to paint or sketch people and this is going to be like especially useful if you enjoy taking a sketchbook out and about. I'm going to be using biro and watercolour, intense in fact, but this will work with conventional watercolour as well. Every Sunday I publish a video. This could be a real-time demo, it could be a plein air adventure, it could be a tutorial, or it could be a combination of all three. I use quite a wide range of media, including acrylic, interactive acrylic, watercolour, ink tents, biro, sharpie markers, acrylic paint markers, watercolour marker pens, and I combine all of those as well. And then I look at a range of different subjects, including animals, portraits, people, landscapes, seascapes, and really just anything that takes my fancy. One of the things I do quite regularly is I, you know, I carry my little intense travel set, my little watercolour pans with me and a biro. And, you know, whether I'm on the beach or in the back garden or just out shopping, then, you know, I'll do a quick sketch if I get the chance work in plein air. So what I'm going to do for this video is I'm going to explain kind of the background for uh, many of these sketches, but I'm also going to do a demo painting of a different version of these two chaps here. So the inspiration for this little sketch was I just dropped my dad off at the dentist and I was just sitting in the car waiting for him and these two guys walked by. So I just took a you know quick photo from a distance and I did this little sketch while sat in the car. And I you know I quite like it. Um, I've got the proportions of the and the stance of you know with this guy on the left wrong. So I'll do a, hopefully a better version or a different version of that. Um, and then, you know, sprinkled through the video, I'll tell you about some of these other sketches as well. So I'm going to start out with my uh, water brush here. Uh, this is a flat and I'm just mixing up some of this kind of yellowy green that I've got uh, in the palette already left over from earlier. And I'm just mixing in some of this rather luminous blue that they include. And I'm doing that just to create a reasonably dark tone to begin with. So these, these figures are almost in silhouette really. So I'm just going to use this to begin to place the two figures in a reasonably loose way on the paper. And the idea is that even though this first placement will be relatively imprecise, what I'll be able to do later is, you know, refine this initial series of marks by, um, you know, adding some biro lines or coming back in with some more of the ink tents. So this is the beginnings of the chap on the right hand side. So I'm trying to pay attention reasonably carefully to the proportions of, of this chap. You know, looking at the angles his legs are making with the ground. I've left a space here for the backpack of the other guy because I'm going to do something similar for the chap on the left in a minute. But um, obviously I want to have these two people to look a little bit different from one another. It just helps. I think it will help the final image, basically. So we've got the beginnings of a person there. Now, you know, sweeping statement, the other guy looks a bit more blue than the, the chap on the on the right. So I've just grabbed some of that same blue and we'll begin to put the other, other person in. And, you know, as usual with my, my videos, I'm not concerned with mimicking exactly uh, reality, but, you know, we just want to be inspired by it. Take the bits that I want, leave out the bits that I don't, and uh, 
you know, hopefully come up with something a little bit new. So there's his backpack. Uh, so he's got his hand in his pocket. The sketch I did earlier of, of this guy actually had his, I don't know whether he had moved his hand in the other reference or whether I just couldn't see it clearly enough because I was working from my phone, but uh, I just had his hand out of his pocket. Um, I've now got my reference on the on my laptop screen, so and I've zoomed in, so you know it's uh, it's a lot easier to see what's going on. Okay, so there's the there's the first kind of statement, I guess. I'm going to let that dry completely. So this little painting was inspired by my wife sitting on the steps in our back garden next to our pet cat. And I particularly like just the lightness of touch that I've maintained uh, in this sketch. You know, it's not a portrait of her, but I think it's quite a convincing figure. And I feel that both she and our cat, you know, they feel sort of very settled in their spots. So very happy with just the general, I don't know, sense of lightness and air and, and sunlight. And then, you know, I've been fairly minimal with my biro here just to, to pick out key areas of, and, and line work. And I kind of stopped er, early enough on this one. So fairly happy with that one. Well, that's dry now. And when we're drawing figures, typically the height of the head, you want to be able to fit about one, two, three four, five, six and a half. So I've got about, um, I can fit about seven heads in, but typically you want about six and a half heads in the height of the figure. So I'm not too far out. If the figure's a little bit wider or thinner than it should be, you're generally gonna be able to get away with it. But, but that kind of ratio of the height of the head compared to the complete height of the figure, that always needs to be pretty good. Now, Having done this in a very loose way, you know, haven't been overly concerned with accuracy. What I'm going to do now is come in with my ballpoint pen. I like using blue, but obviously you can experiment with, uh, you know, different colours. And what I'm going to do now is add a little drawing, more or less ignoring the paint that I've put down before. So when I look at the cap, although it's a rounded shape, you know, we can just approximate that as a series of little straight lines. And when I say I'm more or less ignoring the initial wash, what I mean by that is, you know, I'm definitely going to place the figure in the same spot, same location on the paper that the, the wash is. But um, I'm going to ignore and not be limited by the edges of that wash. So here's the, the cap of the peak. Cap of the peak, peak of the cap. <laughs> Um, and as I'm looking at this, this guy, you know, I'm not looking to paint his portrait. I just want to look at the, the really the minimum number of lines that I can get away with, which is going to describe his posture and his general appearance reasonably accurately. So with that in mind, I'm looking very much at his silhouette and I'm looking at just key features like the hairline and the outline of an ear. Now, you know, as you're watching this, you may be wondering, well, hang on a minute, Mike, what about this extra bit here? This kind of greeny bit, which is going beyond the, the cap. Um, and, you know, I'm not too worried about that, even if it ends up looking exactly like that. That's kind of part of the history and the life you know, of, of the drawing part of the evolution. So hopefully in the finished uh, painting, you know, that it won't be too distracting. Now, he's got the kind of a scarf or a shirt on and the, the backpack he's got, or it could be, a I think it's his backpack, it's difficult to tell. But there's something which comes up here anyway. And then when, we're, when somebody's wearing a rucksack or a backpack, a typical thing you want to include 
are the straps going over the shoulder for kind of two reasons really obviously we have to indicate that the thing is attached to the person in some way but the other reason is that curved line helps to describe the shape of the body the shape of the shoulder and the chest coming down so it's quite an efficient way to communicate the structure of the body and it's the same if somebody's wearing a wristwatch or a ring or a necklace or a belt any of those things which kind of wrap around the body are usually really useful for um, creating a sense of form so he's got all of these uh, weird and wonderful um, I know, don't know what they are really. Are they zips? Are they kind of cords coming off of the backpack? And at that stage, I'm not going to say, at this stage rather, I'm not going to say any more about him. I'm going to move over to the other chap. So the other guy's a little bit taller. And you've got kind of a collar there, or the back of the collar. And then the back of his neck comes up here. And here's the back of his cap. And again, looking at the shape of his nose and just the general angle of the lower part of the face, so that, you know, the whole mouth and chin area. When somebody's away at this distance, we don't really need to include too much in the way of, you know, lips or anything like that. Certainly not at this stage. And then once again, his backpack or the, his back kind of comes down here, but then his rucksack strap kind of comes up here. And then as far as I can tell, it appears to get thinner from our perspective and then kind of wraps over his shoulder there. And then comes down here, comes up a little higher than I had it originally in the in the first wash, kind of bulges down here. And then the angle that his back is making is going to help communicate the kind of level of weight in the in the rucksack and the angle that his shoulders making as well. So his shoulders are kind of hunching forward a little bit and he's kind of having a adjust his posture you know to compensate for whatever is in that backpack you know and then his hand kind of just disappears into a pocket as i said and then his the front of his chest is kind of con a little or his, his torso is a little concave for the same reason uh, the, you know the weight of the backpack just making him walk in a slightly different way to the way i assume he would I guess it depends how often he wears the backpack, but uh, maybe he always walks like this. But um, generally speaking, you know, if we're carrying something, uh, it's going to affect the way you move. It, certainly if it's of any, any decent weight. So then... So the legs coming down here, slight bulge at the knee. And then once we get down to the uh, to the shoes and things, we can just kind of look a little more closely at what's going on in terms of the bottom of the trousers. There's usually like a little gap or often is between the trouser and the shoe.
So this one was from our first trip to the beach since the some of the travel restrictions were lifted recently. We went to Budley Salterton, so it's a beautiful spot, has featured on the channel on a number of occasions. It's a pebble beach. There are lots of these multicoloured pebbles in the background, so that's what's going on here. And this again is a, a painting of my wife. It's not, again, not a portrait of her. I did this in about five minutes, but this one makes me laugh just to look at it. It's, so what happened was we went to the beach and we were both looking forward to having a you know, nice beach day. And we did, we did. Uh, the forecast said, you know, it was going to be nice weather. And so we got there and it was really quite cold. And so uh, my wife kind of lay on the blankets we had. She wrapped herself up in her coat, her scarf, her woolly bobble hat. She's under the blanket and she looked at me and she said, you know, the weather forecast said it was going to be warm and sunny. And it's really not. You know, it just made me laugh. And I just had to do a quick sketch of her. So so I like this. This is one of the reasons I like to sketch like this, because it's it's a memory. You know, I'll look back at this in years to come and it'll, I think it will still make me smile. Now, I've just realized I've made this backpack come down way too far. And, you know, if I'd used pencil or something, then maybe I would try and erase this. But I'm going to have to live with that. But it really it should. You know, it should have stopped about there. So it's a little bit too come down a little bit too low. But what we'll do is what we want to avoid happening is the error in the backpack making a further create causing me to create a further error in terms of the proportions of the figure. So. Um, because when I look at my reference, I'm going to reference everything from where the bottom of the backpack should should have been. So the guy's uh, rear end is there. And then his hip joint is kind of here-ish. So this leg is striding out from there. And kind of so I've got them spaced out slightly incorrectly, but that's going to be OK for my drawing, you know. So there's the leg coming forward and in the reference, I can see his other foot, but it's going to be pretty much dis you know, disappearing behind the first chap here. So but we do need to put in the other leg, of course. So that's going to come in here. It's a little bit of a abrupt change of angle at the back of the knee. Again, looking at that area where there's a little bit of what well, you're yeah, basically the cuff of the trouser leg and the beginning of the, the shoe. There's a little indent there in the silhouette. And then I want to make sure he's kind of anchored on the ground. So this one is just uh, inspired by a trip to the supermarket. Um, I was sat in the parked car. People were queuing to get into the local Tesco's and uh, I just fired off a few photographs. Um, you know, I don't think I even registered these people walking past when I took the photo. I was taking a photograph of the larger kind of scene of people queuing during lockdown. But when I looked back at the references, I was just inspired by this kind of classic everyday scene of a mum She's got the toddler in the push chair. She's got her shopping bags, you know, and the daughter, the older daughter's kind of walking off, but kind of conversing with the mum. And so this is one of the reasons I love to do this kind of stuff, because, you know, even the everyday, what many would consider a chore, just going to the supermarket, you know, it, it can become something really special, you know, if you just kind of look at it with fresh eyes. So having added some biro lines, some ballpoint pen lines to the drawing, I can now come back in with my flat uh, water brush and I'm just picking up some burnt umber here and then squinting at my reference again I can just add some darker areas of tones. I'm still putting on a thin layer of the of the ink tents and I'm going to take you know more care this time to you know obey the outlines not that they're necessarily perfect but they're certainly better than I had with that initial wash. So wherever there is a reasonably dark region, 
I can put a little patch, a darker tone. I'm not worrying about you know, the shapes of the strap or the rucksack or anything like that at the moment. I'm really just trying to establish the sense of light and dark. And if I get a little bit of dry brush, you know, a bit of a gap in the in the brush stroke like I just did there, that's fine. We're just looking to generally darken the key areas and any sort of textural textural effects that happen as a matter of course, that's generally going to add a little bit more character to the drawing for us. Now again, I want to keep the chap on the left a little bit distinct from the one on the right, so I'm just adding just a touch of that same blue to the burnt umber. beach it's, it's a it's a good day the sun's sort of like in and out a little bit but this is basically reality gloves so here's an example of a sketch which i feel didn't work quite so well uh, this is again budley salterton so the one of my wife on the pebbles we would have been on the beach I don't know exactly, but about here. OK, and then if you walk up the coastal path, you can go up onto the higher cliffs and there are all these benches. And it's quite a spectacular view. I was actually struck by these people on the bench, but um, I don't know whether I was feeling cold or I, I don't think I really composed the uh, the drawing properly. I think that's what went wrong here. But nevertheless, even the ones that don't work that well, you know, it's not wasted effort because I've been looking that whole time. It's a memory. But also, you know, this could lead to another painting in the future. So it's always worth doing from my point of view. Now, having done that, it's generally a good idea, I find, to place the figures in some kind of environment. Now, it doesn't have to be an elaborate environment and it doesn't have to be exactly, you know, what we're seeing uh, in the reference, but some indication of a wall in the background for example, uh, and then we could have, you know, part of a house here, which we've got in the background, but I'm going to kind of lower the roof considerably so that it's actually, it's actually visible on the, um, the scale that I'm working in. Uh, and then we could perhaps um, just put another vertical line in here. And then you know, maybe even the, well, that might be enough, actually, because I'm going to have the cast shadow coming this way. So having done that, what I want to do is now just add a little bit of background colour, just very gently in those areas. This is one of my favourite little sketches from recent times. Uh, it's from that trip to Budley again. We were sat on the beach and these this couple were way off in the distance um, and they were higher up on the pebbles than we were. And then these trees in the background. And I, I just like, I don't know, there's something serene and simplistic about it. I like the looseness of the background. And I think I've just captured a moment there, you know, just to be sat on the beach with your partner looking out at the water. So that's quite a, a recent favourite of mine. So I'm going to start by adding a little bit of this kind of purpley colour. Just put that on in a fairly fluid way.
and I'll use that same colour but with a little bit of the blue added up here for the edge of that uh, roof and then I'm going to pop a little bit of red into the same mixture and use that for part of the roof that's showing there then grabbing some of the burnt umber and some more of the blue will just perhaps suggest a couple of windows here on the right hand side now uh, I'm going to want to fill in some of this uh, middle area here a little bit so the figures stand out so I'm just coming in with a little bit of green which I'm just kind of going to blend into what was intended to be that roof and I don't really mind too much what happens in terms of the texture or colour here I just want a fairly subdued background um, and that's going to kind of blend in with that little um, initial wash hopefully that I put in earlier the bit that sort of at the peak of the cap which kind of strayed well beyond the, the the final drawing i'm going to just grab a paper towel pick up that drip there and then coming in with a darker green just let that do its own thing so really I'm just creating areas which are completely out of focus in the background and then that same green I'll mix in with some blue over here and we'll perhaps um, put the suggestion of some other windows in over here as well Then going back over to the right hand side with a pale blue, perhaps there's a bit of shadow here and another bit of shadow against this wall. So really I'm just creating reasonably uh, abstract patterns of light and dark in the in the background, just so that it's not a completely completely you know white whited out area and then having done that I can return to the figures so I've mixed some dark green with the burnt umber and now I'm going to be begin the process of enhancing some of these shadows on the figure on the right but you know, also adding a little bit more colour to to proceedings. So, for example, so the trousers on the cap, I'm going to make the same colour. And I'll use that even for the shoe here as well. 
and then his backpack is uh you know, it's difficult to get the exact color but there's a, i would say there's a little bit more of a lighter green and it as i say he's pretty much um backlit so it's kind of difficult to see the exact color that's going on but i'm just gonna as you can see i've just applied a a lighter green color there and then moving across to the gentleman on the left so his rucksack is much more blue so i'm leaving a little bit of a gap there so you know it's a little bit of light catching the right hand side up at the top here and then i'm mixing that blue i don't have much uh, ultramarine blue left i need to i need to get hold of a new little uh, pan of that but i'm mixing that in with some ultramarine blue to give me a different blue there And, you know, I'm just leaving little gaps where the light is catching. So, you know, we can always come in with a little bit of um, interactive acrylic uh, or normal acrylic on top. But what I'm what I'm doing here really is trying to paint in the way I do if I'm just out doing a little sketch like I showed you earlier. But I'm just taking a bit more time about it. So the point is not to be you know, overly fussy. You're just trying to get something which is effective and uh, you know it's, it's just about training the eye and the hand to get something down fairly quickly so i put a little bit of burnt umber into this last wash and i'm applying now just to make things a little darker as i work wet in wet pick out some of those areas which are in really quite deep shadow get a bit more uh, burnt umber in there so his hair is really quite dark in the reference so I can Use that same colour there. And then let's add a little bit of warmth because um, just to bring a little bit of life to the, uh, the flesh tone. So I'm grabbing some orange. And let's get some red in there as well. And that might be, yeah, that's a bit too dark. I'll, I'll be back in a sec when I fix that. Another Budley Salterton pick looking along the seafront towards town. I think this is a good example of how little you can do in the background. And if you define stuff in the foreground quite strongly, then you can create a nice sense of depth. There are certainly areas of the sketch I'm not that happy with, but I quite like the composition. So again, you know, that could lead to a painting in the future, perhaps. Having said that, I've just realised I can use that colour I just mixed to darken the hair on the guy on the, the right and also you know they're both wearing caps so there's going to be some shadow on the face up near the top around the eyes and so on and i'll continue with that dark color make it a little more brown on the shoe here I'm going to add some red to that for this guy on the left's shoes. Uh, and I quite like that red colour, so I'm going to put 
put some of that into the the hair of this guy. And perhaps a couple of little little patches on his top. In fact, I think that's working quite well for the, the whole of the top. And then we've got this uh, cast shadow on the ground here. So I'm going to mix up some of the, the blue and some of the red to give me a reasonably dark purple. And if I can work my way around the camera tripod. So I'm going to change the shadow a little bit in the way it is. So the reason I tip the shadow downward uh, even more than it is in the reference is I think I had this foot too low compared to these. So I'm hoping that's going to give it a sense that they're, they're walking uphill a little bit. And again, we can use that same colour to enhance some of the darkest shadows. And then I'm going to do something similar on the other chap, but get um, a little bit more orange in there into the mix. So it's a bit more of a, a greeny, greeny brown. Then we can add a few flashes of colour here and there on the on the left side of the figure. So we don't want to go too crazy, but this is just pure yellow here. So oh, that's not actually as bright as I was uh, thinking it was going to be, but it's working quite well over the green uh, of the of the rucksack here. So so that's okay. And then I'm going to add some of the the vibrant green, which comes in this little pan there. So I want to keep some of these pure white highlights but a couple of little touches of colour just helps to make things uh, live a little more. Now the cap on the right, I'm not sure what colour it is in reality but I'm going to add, if I can get the uh, Pan clean, one second.
Um, this is another one inspired by waiting for my dad at the dentist, the same trip as the as the demo painting. Um, these three women were actually chatting to a guy who was standing up and they were sat on a bench all kind of having their lunch. And as I say, the guy was, was standing up having a chat with them. I thought, oh, that's quite a good composition. But the guy was moving around too much. I was struggling to capture him from life. So I just ended up uh, drawing the three women. But I think it's quite a nice little scene. It's just very loose. I like that this lady's having a drink and got her sunglasses up on her head. And, you know, it's just the sort of everyday thing you can see, you know, in town. And then across the square, this was in uh, King's Square, uh, where there are some Georgian buildings. I started to draw uh, one of the buildings. Again, didn't get to finish this one. I quite like the looseness so far. Um, but uh, yeah, you know, just another possible inspiration for a painting. Now we could, you know, leave the sketch like this, but one of the things I really enjoy doing is coming back in with my biro and thinking, well, where do I want the focus of the drawing to be? And I'm going to pick this guy in the front here. That's kind of an obvious thing to do. But then what I can do is say, OK, well, I can have some fun putting in some extra line work, you know, some squiggly bits on the hair, for example. Define the cap a bit. Now, the thing when, is, when we do this, we, you know, you want to enhance the sense of focus and you can enjoy putting some details in, but you don't want to describe everything I don't think that's in my opinion you want to leave a little bit unsaid leave a few incompleted lines and you know just generally kind of you want a, a nice balance between the loose work that you've done already and the kind of bolder line work that's coming in you know uh, yeah, what I'm doing now so for example I could enhance that shadow under the under the strap there but I don't need to complete the outline of the upper edge of that strap. That's unnecessary. I can add a few curved lines in here to help create a sense of roundedness uh, on the upper arm. <coughs> Excuse me, on the upper arm. And as I do that, as those lines come from the area of shadow into that little highlight, it kind of adds to the sense of um, modelling and three dimensions. And it makes those highlights pop a little more as well. And then we can do something on the because it's kind of a quilted jacket or top this this guy's wearing. We can do something similar on the chest, but don't put too many in. You don't have to describe every single thing. Now, as we move down to the to the trousers, we can do a similar thing as well. But so every mark you make, really, you want to think, well, how is this going to help my drawing? So. By putting a few little marks in like this, I can help to begin to describe the folds in the fabric. Put a couple of lines here to get the creases in at the knee. Uh, I think I'm going to mostly leave that lower leg. But um, on the shoe, for example, I could perhaps just suggest some laces. But I'm quite happy to, to leave it at that. And by... Doing the pen here, but not on this chap, you know, it maintains the center, center, center of focus on this guy here. With that line work added, I can now again squint at my drawing, squint at my reference and think, well, how have. How are the tones comparing on each? So when I squint at them, really, this guy's head still isn't dark enough. So I've just picked up some of this kind of oak, yellow ochre brown and mixed it in with what I've got there. I'm going to put a bit of orange in there, a little bit of red. And I'm just going to darken his head a bit because I feel it still isn't dark enough. And then having done that, I'm going to add some blue to that same mixture and some uh, burnt umber to get a nice dark colour. And again, squinting at my reference, where are the darkest shadows? So we can 
I've, swi I've switched to a round brush now as well. It's still, it's still a water brush, but I've switched to a round brush. And, you know, here I'm going over my some of my pen work that I've just done. But of course, I can always do that again over the top if I want to. And furthermore, you know, it doesn't really matter. The whole point of this sketching exercise is to experiment and, you know, kind of dance between the different types of washes and the line work. Grabbing a bit more red and mixing that into what's left on the palette. And I'm just going to darken these shoes. And then I'm going to put a thin wash of orange just on the left hand side of the face there. Thin wash of blue, not everywhere, but uh, on some of the left hand edges of the trousers and jacket. And then a touch of touch of red on the shoes and on the top of the cap. Let's blend that in a bit more. And then this sketch uses a slightly different technique because, again, working plein air, uh, we were uh, near the river mouth of the River X, uh, which leads into Exmouth. And um, there's, there was a lot of activity on the water today, lots of sailing boats, uh, jet skis. I, can, I think that's a jet ski, isn't it? I, think, I can never remember. There's a jet ski and there's something else. I can't remember what that one's called. But this guy was launching his uh, water vehicle. <laughs> we'll just call it that. Um, and uh, as I say, there were loads more boats than I actually captured. Um, and I was working with a Sharpie here, as you can see from these boulder lines. And I particularly just wanted to capture the luminosity of these sails against the black print. Um, so again, just a really enjoyable. And, you know, I'm not somebody who's ever kept a diary. I don't write a journal or anything like that. But uh, for me, these are as much about having little memories as they are about creating artwork. So it's just something I really enjoy doing. Highly recommend it. So let's compare and contrast our little plein air urban sketch with the, the drawing or the painting or the sketch, whatever you want to call it, which took rather longer. So I think this is always an interesting thing to do. If you're, if you're just doing some sketches and then you do a finished painting, I think it's always great to reflect on the sketch. So, for example, if we look at the larger painting, in my opinion, the proportions and the general stance of the figures is far superior to that of the sketch. However, I think the background, like the, the looseness and the lightness of the background and the sense of light in the background as well here, is much better than in the larger, more considered study. So, you know, it's I think it's always an interesting sort of discussion to have with yourself because just because you do something quickly uh, with painting or drawing, it doesn't necessarily mean it has less value than something you've spent an hour on. So, you know, on the whole, I think I actually still prefer my original sketch, even though, 
you know, the figures are drawn better. So perhaps what I should do if I was, you know, it's just kind of a note to myself for the future. You know, I didn't make these windows anywhere new, anywhere near loose enough. And if you think back to the sense of lightness and light on that sketch of my wife with the pet cat in the back garden, that really had a sense of atmosphere, I feel. And it's not that I don't like this uh, current painting. I really quite like the figures, actually, especially this guy. I'm particularly happy with the sense of light on his jacket. And I like the head and the cap. And I like the fact that the second figure is more out of focus. So, you know, there's definitely something of value here. Uh, I might sort of crop the painting um, so there's less going on here on the left. We'll, we'll see. But um, definitely worth considering doing sketching a lot of the time, in my opinion. You know, even if you uh, like working in the studio, just carry a little sketch pad with you um, is, 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 in my humble opinion, that would be my advice. You know, always do it five minutes here and there and it really helps. Anyway, hope you've enjoyed this video. Uh, it's one I've really enjoyed making, actually. So let me know what you think in the comments below. And I hope to see you next Sunday for the next episode of The Sunday Art Show. Thanks very much for watching. This one is from the seafront at Exmouth. The lighting was really quite spectacular, which I haven't really captured here. But again, I just painted this one from the car, um, you know, and it's OK. I think it's, you know, there's some interesting stuff going on here with the looseness of these reflections. There's a certain sense of depth. I quite like the figure um, and it's just a memory of, of walking along the beach at Exmouth, really.